In this video, we're gonna be setting up a super cheap, super easy sun beetle enclosure. So at the reptile shop, a couple of months ago, we thought, oh, there's some sun beetle grubs. We're gonna grab them and then grow them into beetles and add them into a communal as invertebrate enclosure, loads of different invertebrates all in one enclosure, and it's gonna be beautiful. That was the plan anyway. However, we put the tub that we've got them in near a heat source, not too close where it's too hot, but it accelerated the process way sooner than we thought. That build hasn't even been started yet. This is how we set up the grubs. We have our tropical substrate mix just in a jar, just like this, really full, really compact, we chuck them in and let them do their thing. That was it, that's all you really need to do. There needs to be a lot of wood matter and rotten wood inside that enclosure for them to feed on, but that's all we did. We left it up there, a few of the beetles have started to hatch and I'm sat there thinking they can't live in there, they can't go into the actual invertebrate communal enclosure that we're building because we haven't even started it. What do we do? We need to set up a little enclosure just for the sun beetles. Every time one hatches, we can move it out. That's where this comes into play. This is the Tropical Factory UK Tropical Tube. Why have I chose this? One, we've got an easily accessible lid that's magnetized on, so the animals can't actually get out of there. It is a full lid, so we can't really use this for an arboreal tranquil because they're webbed to the lid and to the actual container. We have got ventilation all around the side, that much of the back. So it's just a full 365 degree view of these animals. So this is what we're gonna set up. We're gonna set it up super easy. Again, this is only a temporary setup until that big communal is actually built. All the beetles that are in here have all burrowed themselves again. So we're gonna to have to find them eventually. What are we gonna do? First off, we're gonna take the lid off. Keep that somewhere safe. That's a solid metal lid. I'll leave a link in the description down below for some of these because they are really good and I highly rate them for this sort of project. First, we need to make up some substrate to go into this enclosure. What we've got is basically our tropical mix. So this is full of cocoa core, topsoil. We've got charcoal in it to add for that pH level balancing. We've got white rotten wood. We've got leaf litter. There's uh, orchid bark. There's just loads of stuff in here. If you want to see a video on how to actually make this mix, I'll leave it just up there. But we're actually going to add in a few more extra leaf litter inside this enclosure. This was collected outside in one of my most recent videos and it's been treated, it's perfectly safe, and it's dry as anything. So we're just gonna crush it all up into like a fine dust, and it's just gonna go along. Quite simply because while these sun beetles are in here, if they do so happen to mate and lay eggs, and those eggs hatch, then it's gonna leave some baby grubs. The baby grubs will eat this, so we are planning for a future project. That enclosure is not gonna be built up and ready for a couple of weeks because the, pro the, the bits we need to get to build it. We're just gonna mix all that in and we're basically left with that. This has got to go into the Tropical Factory UK Tropical Tube, only as high as the actual ventilation just there. And the only reason is I don't want any grubs or baby grubs or eggs to be laid outside that enclosure and crawl through those holes. So I'm just gonna quickly break up this and just get it a little bit more mm, perfect for these animals. What you're left with is something just like that. Handfuls and mess of the actual substrate that we're gonna be using in this build. Get it in, compact down a small layer to start with. So we've got that much in there now. We're actually gonna force it down, make it nice and compact, because that's where the babies are gonna to head to first. As soon as the eggs hatch, if eggs are laid in here, that's where it's gonna go. Plus it allows for extra plant growth. If I'm putting a plant in here, which I am, then I want the roots to be sustained within this enclosure. So. The roots are going to have somewhere to root to and stay there rooted for quite a while. You'll notice we've not used the drainage layer, again quite simply because if eggs are laid in this enclosure, we don't want the babies to crawl beneath a drainage layer. Plus these are not watertight, so a little bit of water may get out on breaking up a stick to go in there just to add for that little bit of extra diversity in textures and material. We are left with that. Not bad is it? There's the drainage holes all the way around, so we have come right the way up to the drainage holes. It is quite high. What are we gonna put in there? First things first, I don't know if this is gonna work, but we have got a big cutting of a pothos plant, which pothos is a great plant because it really does grow to anything. So this came out of Tick and Tock's enclosure. Tick and Tock are my baby white tree frogs. Uh, this is, it just came out of their enclosure when we done it. So we're gonna put it in and plant it into one little corner. 
Now there is gonna be quite a few sun beetles in here eventually before we have time to move them over. So we've also got quite a bit of surface area to add in here so it's not too overcrowded. We've got this absolute gorgeous piece of cork back with the lycra all over it already. Again, this came from Tropical Factory UK. I'll leave their links in the description down below because I am quite chuffed with this. Let's get this in just there. So it's like that. How cool does that look? Now we have got the plant overhanging. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get the plant and run it around the cork bark just ever so slightly. Now the joy with a pothos plant, it will root to the effect. I know what I meant by that. It'll basically, wherever you lead it to, that's where it'll root to. We're gonna leave this when it is fully planted over by the window, just to give it that extra bit of chance to, uh, to thrive. It's gonna have the extra light sort of thing. And the sun beetles, they will also appreciate the extra lights. I've decided to go like that, just down one side of the enclosure. Again, the ventilation is here. We've got the cork bag just there and the plant going up. I absolutely love the way that looks. So, what are we gonna add in next? A little bit more white rotten wood. If you know if it's a rotten piece of wood, if you can just grab it, twist it, and it just falls apart in your hand. So what we're gonna do is grab that and just twist it around, get some of that on the surface of the substrate, just to help with keeping the humidity in there. It gives the baby something to munch on, and it just gives a different texture, a different body to the substrate layers. What do you think? Just adds that little piece of diversity to the substrate layers. Shall we start moving the animals in now? Now I do have to, one, be careful because these do fly. If you've ever seen a sun beetle fly, scares the living heebie-jeebies out of you the first time you see it. The noise of the wings is absolutely mind-blowing. It's, oh. But like I say, the beetles that are in here have burrowed down. If you watch my last video, we actually added a beetle up there as well, so I want to get that down too. There's one sun beetle just there. Absolute beautiful species. Check it out. They love to play dead too. So we're gonna get her in just down there. And that's it, we can only really find one. I can't find the one that we put up there. As soon as they do appear, bang, we'll be getting them straight in here. But the next day, we're back with the enclosure just here. You can see one up there. We've actually found another two. So we've got the one out of that enclosure just there. We've got the one extra one that was in the um, babies with the grubs and stuff like that. So now currently there's three in this enclosure. Check them out. So we're gonna need a load of names. Do you guys do this sun beetle projects where you buy the grubs because the grubs are actually sold as live food and they just grow them up to be beetles because the beetles are absolutely amazing. There's no more in there, but again, that just stays down there near the heat source, so it's going to accelerate it. I can't wait to get that project done, but because these have started hatching rather quickly, we've been out and we started to buy all the products to get that built up. We've also got another friend who's reached out to us and said he's got a few extra millipedes so that they'll be able to go in there. That project is coming on rather quickly, but the next project we're working on is the OWLP, the Lassiodorus Paraballus. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. I could have got it wrong. That's how salmon pink bird-eating tarantula is going to get moved into this enclosure. So that's the one we're going to build up next, um, along with all the sticks and stuff that we have just got. But this is the Tropical Factory Tropical Tube. We've just got to add some food in there, which we're just going to give them a piece of lettuce, because that's all we have on hand at this precise moment in time. And... That is that. Let me show you the enclosure closer. There she is, just there. She has been walking along because we dropped her in just over there. There we go. There's the ventilation that we've been on about, which actually, while I'm here, I'll just clear the ventilation that a little bit more just to be safe. I've got the big log, which they can actually walk up and down. They can get a bit of space. Just full circulation, if they want to get out of the heat, they've got the shadow area just there, which they can go to. Just keep following it round, and boom, there she is again. Look at that, she's starting to bury. There's her butt. We're going to leave it on that side of the table, just over here near our plants, on that turntable. And as soon as one does appear from in there, or from up there, we're going to put them in. We're gonna have a collaboration collection of these guys, because if I'm not mistaken, I think there's about 30 in there. I'm sorry guys, but you might have to come up with about 30 different names for these guys.